All right. Well, welcome back to the Castlevania Ravenloft RPG. The last time we saw our characters, um, hashtag pray for Elias because he just ran from a golem, uh, busted through a door, and found three witches on the other side waiting for him. Alexandra was uh, running uh, to help Esmeralda out with the vampires that were not quite finished off. Three of them or so had remained unalive, I guess. Um, and then for Mr. Jeeves and uh, Jack Motley tonight, uh, they are going to either be late or absent. I'm not sure. I'm hoping they'll show up. So uh, we might have a shorter session here, but let's see what can happen uh, if I just kind of play their characters myself to the best of my ability. And um, we'll see what paths Alexandra and Elias take and, and see how far we can get tonight. So, uh, I hope that everybody was praying for Elias because what Elias sees in front of him appear to be three witches that were quite interested in what was going on on the other side of that door for a while now. Um, let's, uh, let's get a good picture of those. I know I have one. links through here. There we go. Yes, uh, of course their environment's different. And there's three of them. But that's pretty much what Elias has been confronted with. Elias, what do you want to do when you pop out the, uh, that side of the door there? When Elias pops out that side of the door, um, he mostly has a look of relief on his face. Uh, he, he kind of recognizes that the, the, the witches are there in front of him, but he doesn't like register at all like what what else could be going on at the time. He's just really glad to be away from the golem and that his what he thought was the best plan he could possibly execute and have in his mind was successful. You know, he rolled that 20 to open the door. And uh, so he's just, he's standing there, he's got his hands on his knees, and he's, he has, a, he has like a little smile on his face, and he's just feeling good about finally getting away from the damn thing. And, uh, <laughs> and, he, and he raises his head, and he sees the witches. And um, he kind of cocks his head a little bit, and, and he's wondering, uh, you know, who they are, what they're doing there, and if they're like the other witches, or if they're, they're hostile, or friends, or whatever, and, and, uh, at first, he doesn't know what to say, so he just uh, gives them a, a glance and <laughs> sees how they react to him. All right. Uh, you see their nasty smiles and mostly missing teeth. Uh, and then one begins to cast a spell. That spell will require me to roll some dice. Let me see how many. And Elias only has 12 hit points left, we should note. Yeah, can you describe the room for me? Yeah, uh, it's been a week, huh? Uh, the walls and the ceiling of this great hall are coated in amber that glistens like fresh honey. Dust covers the black marble floor. To the north, the hall has, a collapse, uh, the hall has collapsed, leaving a wall of rubble. Many amber doors lead uh, from this hall. Standing in front of the south door are three ugly women, women tattered in black gowns, with brooms and black pointed hats. Actually, uh, that's kind of default text. They're about 60 feet away from the door. Um, you, you're at the door, <laughs> and they are uh, 60 feet to the north. Yeah, but they all have so, brooms, and they all look, you know, as Halloweenish as you can make a witch look. Okay, so they're not far uh, away from the rubble of the north, then. Uh, no, they're not too far away from it. They're about halfway to that hall that kind of turns to the left there. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. So, um... Alright, about those dice that I was rolling. Uh, the last thing that you can remember seeing is the 
smile on the witch's face as one of those three cast some spells and the world has gone black for you my friend so with okay. that said let's uh let's get over to alexandra and what she's up to alex uh you heard an invisible esmeralda ask you what should i do and you instructed her to pursue the with the witches the vampires that um, looked to be crawling on ceilings and, and around through the door and off to the north. The last the last little bit that you saw. And then she apparently pursued afterwards, although you can't see where she's at because she's invisible. Apparently she has uh, some really nifty invisibility too because you noticed that she cast a spell and remained invisible, which is some pretty high level stuff. She's going to summon the sunlight from her whip and chase after the direction that she heard Esmeralda calling from. So you're going to go north, okay. Yep. Yeah. She's going to peek in the room first. Just adjusting volume here. Let me see how this volume's picking up. Yeah, I think it's going pretty good. Uh, you guys are just a little quiet to me, but... It's kind of odd. Didn't change anything. Okay, so um, coming through the north, I can reveal the rest of the room to you. Uh, let me get into real mode here. The wall and ceilings in this eastern portion of this bare stone room have collapsed. Uh, to the west and the south are open amber doors. You're coming through the south there. In the center of the room is obviously where that that golem has come from. Um, other than housing the golem and having this uh, this caved-in feature, there's nothing else here really to note. Uh, it looks like the only way out for those vampires must have been Yep, through that door there. Alright, and then uh, the next room is quite large. So I'm going to um, refresh my memory here on how far that sunlight travels. What do you think? It's about uh, let me look it up one dim light up to certain. But uh, while you're looking that up, um, this black marble balcony... 30 feet above the floor overhangs the northeast corner of the temple. T uh, two amber doors leading from this balcony stand open. So from where you're at, you can actually see some doors open to the north, and then it looks like this balcony drops off uh, to uh, a very large room beyond. Uh, 15 feet of bright light and dim light for an additional 15 feet. Yeah, you can just barely see the edge of the balcony before it drops off into darkness. Alright, and as you go more, you can kind of see some stuff to the north through the door a little bit. And then you can also see a uh, very large statue. Um, it, it must be about 40 feet tall. It looks like it's carved out of granite, and it depicts a faceless um, humanoid, but uh, most of its face is obscured in darkness. Let me see if I have a, a description for this room here. Yeah, four, well, I don't know if you can see that far, but you can see at least one of these columns. <laughs> I guess it's already said four, I might as well tell you. It's symmetrical. There's four of these uh, black marble columns supporting a vaulted ceiling of this temple. And at the north end stands a 40-foot tall, uh, tall statue of a cowled figure in flowing robes. The statue's stony hands are outstretched as if in the midst of casting a spell, and its face is void of utter blackness. 
The ominous statue stands between two black marble balconies. Uh, one that you stand on and, and one across from you that you can't quite make out, but uh, just very dimly. Um, let's see. Yeah, the walls of this temple are sheathed in amber, and the doors leading from it are made of amber as well. The arched hallways, coated with amber, lead away from the temple into the west and the east, and flaking these exits are alcoves that hold white marbled statues of robed human wizards with pointed hats and golden staves. One of them has toppled over and is lying shattered on the floor. Does it look like a recent shatter? No, it looks ancient. Okay. Esmeralda, where are you? Um... Roll a perception check. Oh, shit. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to perceive. Um, did you well, want to yell no louder? Get down. I'm assuming you said that kind of cautiously? No, she shouted. Oh, she has shout. no okay. idea where... Yeah, she has no idea where Esmeralda is. She wants to get to her quickly and help. All right. The last time you guys shouted, uh, <laughs> you brought an amber golem. But okay, um, fine. <laughs> no, hey, hey, you said it. Let me see. Let me see what's around here. Okay, yeah, uh, there's a lower floor to this. I don't know if anything there can hear you. Um, oh yeah, actually, something very important can hear you down there. <laughs> oh, great. Um, but you hear, uh, in recall, well, I'm gonna give her another chance. That's more like it. Yeah, Esmeralda, you can faintly hear uh, somewhere in that temple, in, down in the darkness, uh, to the south. She says, the, the entrance to the temple, they're trying to escape. Uh, was there a way down from the balcony? or? Um, there's not an obvious way down, it looks like. Uh, okay. Well go the only way that I can see a door then. <laughs> okay. That's a that's a way from where Esmeralda is. Yeah, she said south and you're like, yeah, let's go north. <laughs> well, there's <laughs> no, you said there's no that's way fine. down off the balcony. All right. Where you came from is a way back. It's pretty high up there. So, you know, if you want to check out that room, don't let us dissuade you from doing what you want to do. It's your character. No, but I have a feeling that something awful is up there. It's to the north? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing that can hurt by, by taking a quick look, right? You there's something you. awful hurting us. <laughs> I'll take a quick glance as I run back to help Esmeralda. <laughs> okay. Alright, sure. Um, how far did you want to go in that room? Quick glance at the door? She's standing right there in the doorway as she passes by. All right, there's not a lot you can really see there, but um, it's a stone room. It looks like a foyer of some type. Um, you can see some doors uh, to the west, and you see four candlesticks on the dusty floor. Unless you go in the room, there's nothing else you can really see here. Okay. Oh, she's going to use all of her movement to... To do what? 
to run and try to make it to that opening foyer. Oh, so, uh, okay. Well, um, while that's going on, while you're making yeah, it's your gonna, run... it's gonna down, take me a while. Yeah. Uh, while you're doing that, uh, let's think about what Jack Motley, Mr. Jeeves, Van Richten, Emil, uh, and that that amber golem that was down in the hole uh, what all that's doing now um, Elias if yeah. you're unconscious what happens to the spell that the golem was under for targeting you well that ended when someone damaged it uh. that, that wasn't me so that ended last last session okay so uh, let's see who goes next they can probably uh, damage it with whatever they've got before it gets back up to them. If they want to do that. Well, I'm sure they'd love to do that. Um, yeah, I mean... Elias put himself at grave risk to get that thing in that hole, so let's hope they make the best out of it. Um... Emil's not going to let it come up without a fight, even though he's not feeling too great. Uh, let's see. Do I just want to do this in initiative order? Van Richten is next. Van Richten has no great magic at the moment to really affect this thing, aside from another holy water. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to toss a holy water down on it. Let's see, and I can use Elias's sheet to go to the actions, and you have the Holy Water sub-weapon conveniently there for me to use. Alright. And because... Why am I not seeing... Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, good deal. Alright, Van Richten says, let's make this count, and then throws in a Holy Water. Damn, he misses. Um, hmm. I'm gonna say that he's got a plus two for being high above it. Wasn't the golem of... still prone? Yeah. Not oh, anymore. No, it's not prone. It was about to kill Elias. <laughs> but um, he's not dire he's not dropping it directly down on the golem yet. It's it's not. It's still kind of at the door where it was. It's gonna get Elias, but um. Let me manually check its its AC here, because I'm going to give a little bit of a bonus. 14, 15, 16. Nope, even with a 16, that is just a little bit shy of uh, actually hitting that golem with that attack. So that's not good. Uh, Van Richten curses, and it is Mr. Jeeves' turn. Mr. Jeeves feels like his weapons haven't been as effective as he would like. So, um... I encouraged him to use Holy Water for his next turn, because he has those two. Ah, okay, okay. He also has a magical weapon, thanks to Jack, giving him the Mace of Terror, but he's too far away to use that. Probably. He's also not proficient with maces. It's a simple weapon, so it doesn't so, matter. I think he's proficient with it, but uh, it's not a finesse weapon, so he can't get that amazing uh, sneak attack damage with it. So, the holy water, I think, uh, is the best suggestion. So, we're going to look into Mr. Jeeves' sheet here and his many items in his inventory. This guy has collected quite a bit of stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure saying, he has. A uh, wrinkled finger, a uh, mess kit, a uh, jeweled necklace. This guy, here, he, he does. He has one holy water sub-weapon. <laughs> so, uh, he will use that. And... Um, Mr. Jeeves, let me just remember. You should have more than one. I thought we bought like five for everybody. Uh, there, it just says one on his sheet, so I mean that's just bad, bad sheet keeping on his part. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it does appear like he has inspiration. That's interesting. Uh, all right, so. Mr. Jeeves, you have 
a better bonus than everybody on this. So, Elias, whenever I throw that from your actions, what do you get there? Ah, you get nothing on decks. That makes math easy for me. And we are out of music. That sucks. Uh, all right. Give him his bonus here. All right, he's tossing it. Down to the hole it goes. <laughs> and Water go down the hole. <laughs> Oh, that one again. I love it. All right, because of the height advantage, uh, Jeeves just manages to uh, burst the holy water on the golem, and as soon as it makes contact with the golem, it ignites its uh, apparently evil flesh. I don't know if golems can be evil or not. They just kind of are what they are. They didn't choose to be what they are, and they just kind of are. All right, so that's going to be 2d6 of damage. Now you're using Alex's reasoning. Uh, he rolled pretty good. There we go. A uh, little bit of damage. Uh, it's definitely getting the golem's attention. So, uh, next up is Emil. He's going to hold his turn in case the golem starts to come up. And as soon as he can, he will swipe at it to the best of his ability. All right. Um, now, uh, the DM takes a moment to consider... Esmeralda's situation and the vampires that were fleeing. Uh, she calls back. They're, they can maneuver faster than me. Should I keep going? And th there is no one to respond back to her call. Uh, you're kind of out of earshot at this point, Alexandra. Okay. You're kind of like in the hallway. Um, I know where you eventually want to be, but you're kind of yeah. halfway between where the vampires came out. Uh, I'll just move you. There you are. Okay. So Esmeralda is going to make a decision here without anyone else. And Every time you've heard Esmeralda confronted with evil of any sort, she has gun hoed tried to kill it. Uh, whether it was an angel that has fallen, a uh, <laughs> any vampire, or any even scent of a vampire, she's always been ready to rock. So uh, she's going to venture forth into the unknown from the rest of the party. That was the last thing she was told to do anyway, so... I think that's fair. All right. Now, the Amber Golem. The Amber Golem sees that it can't quite get through the door and make any successful grab. Well, I don't know. Let me look down there. Yeah, it's a tiny, tiny door. Um, so Elias is out of its, uh, out of its attack range. And it's going to start climbing up to, um, let's see, that's not very much movement. Yeah, it's going to start climbing up. And it has enough movement speed to actually get, let's see, it's that's 30 feet. It can get to the lip of it on it with its movement to the lip of the hole um but i'm I remember gonna when roll I... uh, i'm gonna roll for his climb because his hands are yeah much larger than the handholds that would be easy for you guys to get through i was just gonna remind you to do that because i remember you rolled for it last time you yeah. went down there yeah yeah on the other hand this thing is really strong and climbing is not really an issue for strong things but I'm going to make it uh, a bit of... Um, well, being so strong that you rip the floor away can be a problem, too. Yeah, it needs to get a grip. Yeah, get a grip, Golem. 
<laughs> All right, we'll see if it does. Uh, it's going to make a strength check. Oh, actually, it failed. How the hell did it fail? <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I gave it a fair chance, and um, it did not get up there. So it's going to try again with its other half of its movement, so it won't be able to attack this turn. That's great. Out of all the things this could miss a check on, it was a strength check. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, even worse that time. It failed again. So yes, uh, it didn't really get up that much. It got up far enough for Emil to take a swipe, though. So he's going to go ahead and use his action now to attack it. Um, however, Emil doesn't have any weapons. Let me see if his claws have any special properties here. They don't. Uh, he rakes into it, and it looks like it scratches it pretty good, but just like Mr. Jeeves' arrows, it doesn't look like it inflicts any significant damage. Um, Every little bit helps. I would like more music, so I'm just going to replay what we had already done. Yeah, I tried to queue up some, something else, but nothing happened. Uh, did you... Did oh, you do it about me, Chad? He did. I can see it there. Oh, weird. I did it in the Ravenloft chat. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah, it's gotta, gotta be the balcony, balcony chat, my friend. We're we're oh, I did it again. I did it <laughs> again in the balcony chat, not the balcony voice chat, but the balcony chat room. That's the one you use if you want to do that. Hmm. Okay. So I'll I'll let you do that instead of just playing the same thing because I like Curse of Darkness. That's a great soundtrack. All right. So. Emil is feeling a bit vulnerable right now. Um, all right. It's really tough to keep track of what Jack can cast at this point. I know. But it is his turn, and I'm going to look over his spells here. When in doubt, Elder Blast? Uh... He had to give away the Mesa Terror, huh? That would've been cool. Jeeves could just hand it back to him. Yeah, he didn't seem too happy to, to really use it anyway, did he? And it looks like he's got some first and second spell left, like one of each. And whatever the hell patch magic is, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Uh, Alright, so... He probably wants to keep a shield spell, and that's a level 1 spell. And his level 2 spells are not really offensive. Damn, Jack. Um, he has cantrips. Such as Eldritch Blast, which would probably be the one that he would use. Um, he's been using see. this whole time, so... That's true. But that mace, man. He could, uh, he could use the terror on it. I don't know if the golem is... If that would affect it or not. Or Jack doesn't know. But, uh... It'd be interesting to try. I'm just gonna use Eldritch Blast, since that's what he normally does. Um... A ranged spell attack. And it doesn't look like it's linked. Huh. That's interesting. Let me look at my spell library here. Maybe he made this character before we had the player's handbook. I think he has several copies of Jack, too, so. Yeah. It could be different ones in there. It looks the same. Nope, the ranged spell attack isn't a link. That sucks. Alright, um, well, I'm guessing it's probably just his dexterity plus his proficiency. 
That's why, you know, Fantasy Grounds has spoiled me really good, since everything is basically just drag and drop with all these attacks. I know. I think that's what he usually does, is drag it, because I see it pop up with its name on the, the, uh, the chat window. You might have to expand it or something. It doesn't use his dexterity. Interesting. The ability modifier used for a spell attack depends on the spellcasting ability. Your attack bonus with a spell attack equals your spellcasting ability modifier plus your proficiency. So nope. I'm glad I checked because I was thinking his dexterity went into it, but it does not. The things we learn every day. All right, so his proficiency bonus is three, and his casting, I believe, is based off charisma. So that would be a plus six total. And Ooh, he rolled terribly and misses. Um, let me see if this happens twice. A beam dropping energy. Uh, let's turn it on. Uh, spell carries more than one beam when you reach a higher level. Two beams at fifth level. Yeah. He usually rolls two beams. Alright. Uh, you can direct the beams at the same target or different ones. Make separate attack roll for each beam. Alright, so he gets another try there. Ooh, that's a hit. Okay. He, he rolled a total of 25 on that one, so... Um, it's 1d10. I don't know why that spell doesn't have its... Uh, maybe if I expand it out, I just don't know what I'm doing. If it doesn't expand, you might have to go into the combat view for uh, a character. It does sheet. expand. Everything's here you can roll for it. <laughs> Alright. I knew there had to be. Ah, uh, yeah. There's even a d10 plus 3 there. I wasn't aware of that. Why does it get a plus 3? Huh. Don't question it. Just kill the golem. Don't question it. <laughs> okay. It's only 3 points, I guess. Um, he, right, yeah, so. he's always had that. All right, yep, he does a bit of damage to it. Uh, the golem does look really damaged at this point, but um, it's not quite done for yet. It's still a very dangerous threat. But Jack's done what he can. He's flying directly above the hole, uh, kind of high up, so it's not within reach of when it comes up. Um, well, actually, if it makes it all the way up. Um, nah, I don't think it could reach him. All right, Alexander Belmont. All right, uh, you can move your... Well, you tell me, what would you like to do? That's as far as you got after moving around last time. Well, if I use my full turn to move again, I'll wind up here. All right. Uh, then you just kind of run past everybody that's fighting, and... But I kind of want to have her ask Jeeves to follow her for help, but I don't want to take away a damager to the golem torn. Um, well, I mean, to be quite honest here, he's not really being all that effective. Alright. Uh, Jeeves, I could use your assistance if you don't mind. Uh, he looks at his inventory for more holy water and says in a very British accent, Well, I think I'm out of holy water because I can't keep my inventory nice and tidy, so <laughs> on my way, my lady. <laughs> and uh, he'll use his turn to fall. Wow. All right, uh, it would be Elias's turn, but it's not for some reason. Van Richten, what would you like to do? Van Richten has holy water, and he is going to attempt to use it. All right. It may look like Elias is casting. Oh, he misses terribly. Van wow. Richten curses even louder. He is kind of useless right now. Yeah, well. Uh, it's Jeeves' turn, and he's going to... Um, he's going to say, 
what are we doing as he's passing you? So that's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Esmeralda went after the three vampires. They're trying to escape. We have to stop them. Which way? Down the stairs and into the main foyer. Alright. Uh, let's see, 40, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Let's try to stay well hidden. I don't know if anything heard me while I shouted out there. Case. Let me roll a hide check for him. It's very good at this. Uh, should be in the H's. History. It's stealth. Oh. <laughs> okay. Damn, he gets a 5 e Mike. Dude, I'll never get used to 5e. He rolls a 28. So. Nice. Wow. <laughs> good job, Mr. Jeeves. Uh, yeah, he's very sneaky, you feel. Uh, <laughs> um, let me check something else, too. Okay, uh, that's going to be near impossible, but let me, let me do it just for the case of doing it. Uh, so you never know. You never know when a natural 20 is going to show up. It'd have to be 20 plus 8, though. <laughs> No, uh, 20 is an automatic success. Oh boy. Alright. <laughs> or a natural one, you know, those happen too. Is that a good thing? <laughs> For us? In this case, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna say so, yeah. Not to give too much away, but it's definitely a good thing for you. Uh, let me check the map over here. Hmm. Alright. Next up. Emil. <laughs> just shrugs his shoulders. And waits for an opportunity to do something useful. Uh, he says, if it comes back up, I'm just going to try to kick it off. <laughs> Hello. Hey! We have buddy. a Jeeves! Hey, I just Mark. took your turn, man, but uh, I did good for you, sir. I rolled a 28 for your stealth check. Nice, thank you. And I'm going to increase your volume a bit, because I don't know what's up with my sound, man, but everybody's showing up kind of even a little bit. Maybe... Oh, I've got my... i got my stuff turned down, I think. Can I get a sound check? Sound off, everyone. Hello, right. check. Sound off, one, two. Oh, yeah, I got Brent up a bit too loud. Let me turn you back down. Brent, sound check. Test, 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 test. Much better. Uh, you reset the map for me? What was that, Mark? You reset the map for me, yes, I... Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, I actually have the volume for that music up way too loud, guys. Why didn't someone tell me? Yeah, I had to lower it myself. I thought it was just me. I usually keep the bot muted, so... Don't yeah, mine's been, mine's been down for quite a while. Well, I apologize, everyone, on the stream, and listening on YouTube. I hope that you don't mind. It's Castlevania music, so... Unless that's why they listen. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, uh, with that said, if only, if only these people would stop talking over the music. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So what are we doing? What are we at? Well, uh, so what you've missed out on was uh, Elias didn't really say or do anything to those witches. He just kind of waited to see what they did first, and. They began casting a spell, and that's the last thing he remembers before his world turned black. Um, but he doesn't know his world turned black. I mean, when you lose consciousness, do you really know you yeah. do? Yeah. You just kind of... Existential consciousness crisis. <laughs> yeah. Man, I've got you up loud, too. Let me, let me adjust you. I, I turned everybody up. Huh. Alright, so... 
yeah, you missed out on that, and then um, you have decided that your uh, your arrows aren't really doing that much to the golem. And you saw Alexandra run past, and she asked for your help. So um, you went with her, and she directed you to go down the stairs and look for Esmeralda. You're trying to stop vampires that were attempting to escape. Okay. Ah, they're vampires. Yeah. A uh, question for you, Mark. Uh, don't you have multiple holy orders from when we bought several back in the day? Um... If I did, I don't know that I have because my holy water sub blah, blah, blah. my holy water sub weapon doesn't even have a quantity next to it. Yeah, it's got a quantity of zero because I just used your last one. Yeah, because no. the thing is, like we all we all stocked up at the same time with the priests because we could get as many as we want. I think we all got five. Well, your inventory said one, yeah. so you're out. Well, uh, that's that then. None of the blessing stuff for me. Yeah, sorry. You had a billion things in your inventory, but only one vial of holy water. Well, I'm going to give you mine when I see you again, because Elias can do something that's pretty much the same thing with a cantra. So, later on. Once once you find his body, we can take those. From but <laughs> there's that tactile pleasure there of grabbing a vial of holy water and throwing it on the ground to watch it somehow ironically become from water to fire. Mm. Yeah, and then miss anyway. Yeah, the ground is <laughs> uh, uh, If you're Van Richten, especially. All yeah, right. If you're not a, yeah, if you're not, your boy's been a little useless tonight, Jeeves. Sorry. If you're not a well-trained vampire hunter, as Van Richten clearly is not, then you know you might miss. Huh. All right. Well, now that you guys are on this side of. Uh, this side of the temple. Um, you know the Esmeralda and the vampires were a couple of rounds ahead of you guys. So, roll perception checks, Mr. Jeeves and Alexandra. Alright. Yeah, I'm going to say, Mr. Jeeves, um, you heard something to the south. Okay, kind of like the way we came in? Yeah. Okay. And was it my turn? Or was it just free turn? No, that was just a perception check. Okay. Yeah, because the vampires are doing stuff, and Esmeralda's behind them. Oh, we're still in battle. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're still in initiative order, and it's the, the golem's turn to... See if it can cause any more havoc, this adventure. Uh, Alright, so... Last time it tried to climb up, it had a horrible time. Which was very surprising to me. So it's going to start climbing up again. And this time it is successful. But Emil is was waiting for it to uh, try to find a good handhold. And he is going to attempt to... Uh, kind of grapple with it and push it off. So... Come on, Emil. Uh, Emil, you have a damn good chance of actually doing this. Oh, he rolled a natural one. Are you kidding <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna say that uh, the golem has used him to help pull itself up <laughs> and is going to uh, slam him down uh, attempting to throw him down the hole so uh, oh, God, please miss. we'll see if he can resist this how how? Oh my god. He rolled a 2 and it still hit. That's just the... The, the golem's just badass, guys. Um, Alright. Yeah, he rolled a, a, a natural 2, but modified, it hit. The golem is amazing. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's nothing to be... Nothing to be messed with. 
uh, you hear a sickening crack as the golem um, grabs Emil and tosses him all the way down the hole. Uh, you hear him crack uh, somewhere down below. Well, when I say you, I mean Jack and Van Richten. Um, so no one can see Emil at the moment. <laughs> Um, it already says it in chat, so yeah, it kind of spoils it. But yeah, Emil is no more. Next up is Esmeralda. He has death saves to roll. He is an NPC. Ooh. All right, so um. Esmeralda. <sighs> what would she do? I think she's smart enough not to pursue. Yeah, this doesn't sound very fruitful for her to try. Yeah. Um, she's, so, she's, hey, she's evil, but she does have common sense. Right. Uh, she comes back into the hall where you guys can't really see her, but you can hear her. Uh, she sounds like she's kind of near the entrance of the um, temple. And you hear her say... Uh, they've gone. They're out. I'd, I'd freeze out there. By myself, they could turn on me. So... You tried. Well, I'm sure that they're going to warn Strahd that we've come here. Very likely. But no matter what happens, this place was never supposed to be safe for us. Right. Well, let's get to our friends then. And um, next up will be Jack. Uh, Jack sees his acquaintance. <laughs> I would almost want to say friends with their time that they used to escape uh, Castle Ravenloft together. Um, thrown to the bottom and killed. And is none too happy about it. I'm going to say... For this m moment, uh, Jack will have inspiration. Now, you say that uh, NPCs uh, apparently automatically die when they uh, they go into the dying phase, but Jack does have a cantrip to spare the, de the dying, if that would work in this situation. Oh, he does? Yeah. Hmm. I have the same thing. Spare the dying? He does have something called spare the dying. What the hell is it? It stabilizes uh, you touch a, somebody at zero. You touch a living creature that has zero hit points. Hmm. Hmm. The creature becomes stable. No effect on undead or constructs. I don't see why that wouldn't really help. So, uh... I'm gonna allow that. And... Instead of giving him inspiration. <laughs> Uh, he's just gonna fly down and use use that. Let me see if he even has to fly down. I need to look at it again. It's touch, I believe. Uh, spare the dog. It is touch. Yeah, it is touch. And it takes an action. So, yeah, he's gonna use his action to go down there and stabilize uh, Emil. However, guys, to get down there, he's gonna have to get past the golem. The golem threatens that, that area. Well, that's a decision you'll have to make for, for Jack then, because I don't know how to tell you to do that, because <laughs> that's dangerous. <laughs> uh, Jack has one shield spell left, and it's at the life of a ally, so I'm going to say that he's going to do it. Um, the golem is going to take a swing at him, however. Would the, golem get, would the golem get disadvantage if it was in like raven form? Like small raven form? Yeah, I mean... He still threatens that square no matter what. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, hmm. Roll low. Well, it would make him harder to hit. 
Another question is if the is the golem not out of the hole yet? He must be hanging on to something. Well, he was hanging on to a mill, and he actually got up out of there. Oh, you just haven't moved him to the. Oh yeah, I've got him on a completely different level, don't I? <laughs> he's down there. Now he's little. He's, he's tiny. That's uh, cute. Pocket golem. <laughs> Dip. Why is he so small? I can't mouse over him and oh. <laughs> I can spin him. Uh, unlock release token scale. Uh, and then spin, spin, spin. Now he's super tiny. Whoa, that's too big. <laughs> he's really big. All right, lock token scale. There we go. Okay, so let's switch places. A mill's down there. <laughs> uh, Eh, close enough. That's that's about five. Okay. Um, I'm not showing this very well on stream. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I like the little death face on him. That's oh yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get everybody else here. Kind of framed in a bit. All right, so yeah, I'm just gonna put the golem basically right here. He takes up 10 feet, so he's like the size of uh, a large construct. Derp. Um, okay, so let's see. With Jack, I'm gonna say even even if he was to go into Raven form. Um, all his dexterity and flying and all that would still be uh, weighed against the golem's attack, so nothing really changes. It's a great idea, though. Alright, so... Um, come here, Mr. Golem. I have an idea. Well, he's gonna hit, so let's see what shield does. It raises his AC to like 23, I believe. Golem slammed for 26. Then it wouldn't help. <laughs> I have an idea before anything's finalized. Uh, what's your idea? Then Richter could get its attention. Uh. If it was his turn, it's, he it's might. Gonna take, well, it's going to take an Jack attack could, of opportunity. Jack can hold his turn, and then Van Richten can try to lure it away and get its attention. And then Jack can just freely go down the hall. Mm. Well, that will be the next turn. The golem can act again, and uh, Emil will be dying faster. So, Spare the dying is good for up to a minute. So that's ten rounds. I think he'll be okay. That's not what happened anyway. I mean, he, he's already been hit. Uh, I need to check up on shield, though. I don't see that about a minute on the, the spell. When you are hit by an attack... Until the start of your next turn, you have a plus five bonus. And his AC is 17 normally. 22. Yeah, it's still going to be a hit. Ooh. Did I just get Jack killed? <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, it could happen here. Depends on the damage, but yeah. Yeah, it might happen, guys. He can't die if he's not here. In the chat, he said to get himself killed. <laughs> oh, he lowered. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. What? No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. What chat? Which chat? Which chat? The Castlevania Facebook chat. He said, yeah, just have Jack knocked out, killed in the golem battle. I can't make it tonight. Oh, well, we might fulfill that wish. <laughs> oh. All right. Here comes the damage. Heavy damage. Let's check his health. Where is it? He's still alive. Oh, wow. Points. Was that an appropriate response? That's four hit points left. 
But he makes it down and he heals, uh, or he stabilizes Emil. That is pretty crazy. Um, and what is he gonna do? <laughs> uh, Jack notices uh, what's on the other side of the door. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Right. So, I'm not going to reveal any of that right now. <laughs> um, Alex, it's your turn. Stuff's going pretty crazy over there with that golem. You might want to lend your support. Yep. Jeeves, the vampires are a lost cause. We have to destroy this golem before it wreaks havoc and destroys all of us. Yeah, I can go. Why was Steve's going down the stairs anyway? Because she I thought uh, that's the direction that Esmeralda ran to. I thought she was outside. She she almost was, yeah. Okay. The Esmeralda and the vampires had a few extra rounds on them, and uh, she kind of went uh, over the balcony, up a little bit, and then halfway through. It just kind of worked out to where she knew generally they were south when she was up farther north, but she didn't know well, how it, far south they were. Well, it just confused me because, you know, Jeeves went from the hole to the stairs. That's that's going north. So it just yeah, seemed right. weird to well, me. She just didn't understand. It's <laughs> completely understandable why uh, she, she would send him down that way. Because yeah. when I described that you know, you could hear Esmeralda down in the temple. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, not exactly where... It, it's it's guessing. It's based on perception. D don't worry about it. But it's it's legit <laughs> that she would tell him to do that. But, yeah, I wasn't sure if there was stuff under, like, uh, you know, down under the where the balcony, the higher level is anyway, like under where we came in. Because it kind of looks like there could be. Yeah, uh, actually... Um, there's a there's well you guys can't see any of that right now right don't tell me <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah yeah uh, anyways so Alex you have um, enough distance between you and the golem to get over to it and make full attacks yes I do but do I want to get that close and risk it hitting and slowing me again. Yes, yes, you, yes, fire you off some arrows. If, if, if you want to think about us for a minute, <laughs> uh, arrows didn't really help Jeeves out too much. I, I think you might be the hero here if you just uh, go and kill the thing. There goes nothing. Or everything. Oh, that's a miss. That's okay. You get more try more chance. That is a hit. That's great damage, too. Yeah, but still not enough. Um, do you have, like, an action surge or anything? No, I burned everything, Mike. That's what I told you last time. I desperately need a long rest. <laughs> I have burned everything. Okay. So no trip attempts, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's your... why I didn't want to get close to it. Do you get your extra die for this attack? Not undead. No, it's not undead. Okay, so Alexandra uh, cracks uh, one of the golem's legs in half, uh, but it still looks like it's a threat. It is a really tough cookie. Uh, Elias, nothing happens for you. Van Richten is going to uh, unsheath his cane sword. Well, it's still unsheathed, but... He's going to use his cane sword and uh, attempt to stab at the amber golem. And he says, I've had enough of this, and he stabs into the golem. Let's see if he hits. He misses, <laughs> but he has multi-attack, so uh, he's going to get another try here at this. Um, 
Oh my god, <laughs> automatic miss. What the hell, guys? <laughs> he is useless. He is not allowed to come adventuring with us anymore. I think I've rolled once tonight for everybody. Everybody I've rolled for, I think. Except for maybe Mr. Jeeves. Mr. Jeeves, it is your turn. Can you come in and, and do something? Because this is getting... I can try and shoot it. All right, you'll have to get to it first. All right. Can I shoot it from here? Yeah. <clears throat> it would be sneak attack, too. Well, considering how we're doing, let me try and hit it first. There's a miss. Yep, told you. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, a meal. Uh, you're unconscious. Huh. Uh, yeah, no, no action for you. All right. The vampires have got away. I'm removing them from the combat tracker. Three of they them got away. It. You're not sure where they are. But, uh... Okay, it's the Amber Golem's turn. And it's going to focus its attention on Alexandra. It misses the first slam. Of course it is. It misses the second slam. Whew. All right, make a wisdom saving throw. I can still burn sentinel. What? Sentinel? Oh, wait, it attacked no, you. no, no, right. Yeah, it attacked me. Never mind. All right, uh, you're slowed. Yep. Exactly what I want it not to happen. All right, Esmeralda's trying her best to get back to everybody. Ooh. Um, she has just enough. Uh, Mr. Jeeves, you feel a presence behind you, and then you hear the casting mm -hmm. of a magic spell. <clears throat> I'm going to duck. <laughs> All right, good idea. Just a little bit, just the one knee. Uh, let me see here. What cantrips does she have? Does she have cantrips? Come on now. Yes, Firebolt. Firebolt is the thing to use here. She <laughs> casts a, a bolt of fire next to you and uh, says, sorry, Mr. Jeeves, and you see the shot fly wide and miss the golem. <laughs> All right. Jack. <laughs> Jack? You're going to Eldritch Blast. That is what Jack does best. You're not going to use him to save a meal? He already has. Yeah, he's already done that. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, he took a hell of a hit to get to, to do it, too. All right, so that's a ranged... That's plus six, okay. I'm sorry, I thought you had a burn shield. I didn't know we could cast experimenting oh with Oh my god, so shield. one ray misses. Oh, why am I doing it like that? I forgot. I just didn't do it right last time with the dragging. All right. Now shield is on like uh, It wasn't shield. He's casting Eldritch Blast. The second one. Oh, last round. I was ahead. talking to Alex about it. And that damage is just enough. Uh, the golem cracks uh, completely in half and uh, topples down the hole. Uh, Jack easily avoids it. And. Um, Jack would probably say something very Jack-like at the moment. Any Anyone want to improvise Jack? Jack oh. says, Fuck you! <laughs> That's a great impression. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. <laughs> is your father still there? No, he's not. <laughs> he would like that anyway. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's exactly My what My neighbors might be amused, but, you know. Yeah, uh, well... Sorry, neighbors. Anyways, okay. Uh, 
uh, as far as you guys can tell, um, combat has ceased. However, Jack says, we may have a problem. Everybody get down here. The witches are having their way with Elias, and it's not a good sight. <laughs> they haven't seen a man in centuries. And Elias has never seen a woman. So. He still hasn't. These are hags. They don't count. Alright. I need to read something about these, witch these uh, witches. Huh. They're thirsty. I'm too old for pie, if that's what you're wondering. You're never too old for pie. They're that's thirsty silly. for man flesh. That is ridiculous. I mean, I mean to make pie out of Elias. He's he's too old because he's not a child. You don't <laughs> think that your meat would be tasty in a stew? No. Your long pork would be very appreciated by witches, I'm sure. No, his meat is very pious and bitter. <laughs> pious. <laughs> Love it. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, um, Jack sees that three witches have an unconscious Elias, uh, and they are gr grinning wickedly, uh, holding him hostage, his un his unconscious body, which doesn't seem to be bleeding out or anything. Um, Jack recognizes they probably cast some kind of sleeping magic on him. And he's snoozing like a baby. Uh, however, hopefully his nightmares are better than reality. These witches look I'm like... Breaking up, Mike. You're going out, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, they have cast some sort of sleep magic on Elias and am, are holding him hostage. And they're, they're ready to talk to the rest of you. Oh, they're willing to talk. Though. That's good. So, does so everybody want to start making their way down the hall? Uh, Party go down the hole. Party hole. It's up to you. You guys let me know what you want to do. Elias, Alex is going Jesus. down. Lay there. All right, Mr. Chiefs, are you going down or are you doing something else? Going down. All right, so everybody goes down. So uh, we're on the uh, the other map now. Uh, everyone's becoming large in size. Uh, why is this happening? <sighs> uh, Van Richten's going to stay up there. I'm not sure where Esmeralda's at. And let's shrink you guys a little bit. Shrinky dicks. Got you all excited here. All right. Elias is actually up here. With all of the colors of our damage and the green and all that, we look like a fucked up bag of Skittles. <laughs> Alright. Skittle crew. Hashtag Skittle hype. Alright. Um... Let me just go ahead and add these switches to the combat tracker just in case there is a nice visual representation of where everyone's at now all right, yeah, it looks like they've drug Elias over and have his helpless body uh, at their mercy. What do you guys want to do? Why is it you haven't killed him? Don't be disappointed. <laughs> she's not disappointed, she's curious and she wants to know their motives. Well, we thought it might be fun to have a little chat with his other friends who've been making so much noise up there. How did you open that door? Door handle? We woke up a golem. 
Yeah, yes, we saw it. We would like you to open this door, and they point to the door that's kind of in between you and them, and on the east side. They're talking about the door that uh, Elias opened that you guys didn't see. This one? Yes, this one. What's behind there? <clears throat> that is none of your concern. Uh, it's now that you kind of realize where you're at. So, um, this is the first time a lot of you have been down here. Uh, this room that you're in has walls of glazed amber, a floor of red marble, and rough-hewn shaft in the center of its ten-foot-high ceiling. Um, there's three amber sarcophagi that are standing in the alcoves here, and above each sarcophagus, um, that's where those, uh, floating green heads were. Those are destroyed at the moment. But, um, that's where the flame skulls came from. However, you see what looks to be some sort of shifting black mass. Uh, it's formless in shape, but it seems to be trapped in these amber, these giant amber blocks of uh, they're not square or anything. They all have very natural shapes, but it looks like there's some kind of shadows trapped in these amber slabs. But yes, the is behind. Go ahead. Whatever's behind that door, could it kill us? Whatever's behind the door is none of your business. If you don't open it and leave here, we will kill your friend. Huh. Alex glances at the others. What choice do we have, gentlemen? Hmm. What guarantees do we have that you'll let him and us live if we do what you ask? You don't need a guarantee. You need to do what we say or he dies. If your intention is just to kill us anyway, then why would we help? I don't think she's understanding the point here. And uh, they start crouching over Elias looks like they're ready to go ahead and get this going it's your decision to let us open this door on our own eventually or are you going to speed up the process here well, I guess we can take a look at the door alright go ahead limey TX All right. Oh. I see a couple doors, so. Yeah, yeah, it's that one that you're closest to. All right. Do I see any like? Is it just a door door, or is it like key? What, what's what we're looking at? Uh, it's a pretty interesting door. Um, you can sort of see through it, but uh, not very well. You can tell it's translucent. It's dark on the other side, though. Um. It's not exactly transparent. I mean, it's not like glass, but... Um, right, it's like it was upstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you see uh, metal hinges in the side of the door. However, where the door opens and closes, where the handles should be, uh, there appears to be no real lock. Just uh, there's a, a slot there you can kind of put your hand in to push or pull. But it doesn't look like there's any kind of um, mechanism that keeps it in place. Like it would swing freely open. Uh, so the door, the door that you guys just went through is the same way, and you can look and how see how that one was open. What I'm saying is, Elias had to open the one that you went through just now. That was the same as the one you're looking at. Dead men he tell opened. no tells. <laughs> I thought he was. I thought he had opened it by smashing right through it. There you go. I think that's what you're saying. I can to say. say <laughs> I will say I will say no more because I'm dead. Unconscious. Sleepy. Sleeping. Sleepy. Sleeping beauty. Well, jeez. Headbutt it. Give it your best shot. Um. 
I'm gonna. Bella, I don't have time for this. So there's no lock to Bella. Uh, maybe Bella. kick it. <laughs> Is your dog being bad? Yeah, she's not going to bed. Kick, kick it with your face. <laughs> kick the dog with her face. That's terrible. No, the door. Oh, we're playing. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, she's a little annoying dog. She won't come yes. when called. Most yes, go kick the dog Her. with your face. Is she a Yorkie as well? Yeah, they're all Yorkies, all three of them. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, they're all cute. Yeah. Okay. Um. So there's nothing. No. 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 Lock. Not really a handle. Nothing. Just translucent-ish. Yep. It looks like if it's locked, it's done so magically. Uh, there's no way I can sense magic or anything, so... I guess I'm just going to try the handle and pull it, or push it, whichever way I think it might open. Okay. Uh, just trying it, you can tell it's not going to move um, with without any extra effort. Or cunning. <laughs> Cunning effort. <laughs> Either one. Alright, I'm trying to shoulder barge it. All and right. Alex throw him at the door and assist. Sure. Uh, so what with advantage, go ahead and, and make a strength check. And I don't have that DC on my screen. Where is it? That was an advantage. I clicked the advantage button. We'll just yeah. roll it again without advantage. <laughs> That's uh, worse. Wow. Oh, yeah. Not too great. Yeah, no luck there. Okay. I guess it's up Elias. to me, <laughs> yeah, Man, if you guys could have just seen. He owned that door, man. It was badass. What do you do? I guess it's my turn. Uh, well, you were assisting, so... That was kind of your turn. Yep. That's what you get. Yeah, basically assisting allows the person with the higher roll to roll twice. So uh, it's better to assist than try on your own. You might get a high, higher die roll, but your strength is probably less. So that's the way that usually works, it's assisting. Um, Jack says, let me take a look at it. And I don't know if he can really uh, detect what's going on here. Or maybe Jack would logic out something. <laughs> logic out something? Go ahead, tell me. So Jack would, uh, I'm, I'm going to say out of character, he might realize and he might make the case to the witches that the one that they put to sleep is the one that opened the door, just like this one. So if they bring him back, he might could do the same to the door they're looking at. Yeah, I think that's a very Jack thing to do. Uh, yeah, so uh, Jack says, hmm, huh, and he looks and strokes his, uh, well, he's got his mask on. But um, he strokes what would normally be his chin and says, yep, I know. What opens this door is what opened that one, and that would be that guy right there. So... Wake him up and put him to work. And, uh... I need to roll a persuasion check. So... Come here, Jack's character sheet. Got a billion things in the combat track over here. Uh, persuasion. He's quite good at this. Ooh, a natural 20. Wow. I did a good thing. Yes, um, this logic makes total sense to these witches. And uh, they just start shaking you enough to wake you up. That's as simple as it was to get you to wake up. So uh, you haven't lost any hit points or anything. Um, you were just asleep. Okay. And they say, your friends have convinced us to let you help us. And if you don't... One of them will die. You get to choose which one. Who's it going to be to take your place? Um, excuse me? Help you do what? Open that door there. 
like you did that one. Uh, I see. Um, I suppose I could do that. No one should have to be hurt, although it was quite a feat to open the first. I will give it my best shot. Yes, and Elias... we'll, we'll need a fresh hostage. Hmm, let's see. How about... How about the mostly naked and cold-looking one in the robe? So they want Jack. He would volunteer himself anyway, probably. All right. So Jack says, sure, why not? And he takes your place. But Elias looks relieved and somewhat... Uh, well, he looks happy to see everybody, that they're all still you know, alive and they're all together and they're, not, they're in bad shape, but he thought uh, things were going to be much worse than they presently are, even though they're currently bad. Well, I'll probably just abandon Vedrickton up there on the top floor. Yeah, and over to your right, you might see uh, Emil's bloodied and unconscious body on the floor in the other room. That's yeah, he might. Small door. He might see that. Um, yeah, he, he does notice Emil, and he makes uh, a mental note to uh, to go over there and heal him up next chance he gets. But he's not going to risk that with the, the witches having uh, Jack. Uh, is someone available to assist Elias' strength check? Sure. Yeah, you guys can wait. And then when the time comes, it's a new round. Okay. Uh, so with advantage, go ahead and roll a strength check. Alrighty. Hopefully it'll be a little better than Jeeves's. <laughs> a little better. A little bit better. Yeah, not, not um, good enough. Sorry. Yeah, so maybe uh, it it doesn't work, but um, Elias does. This time? What's that? Can I try, gentlemen? Um, if you'd like to assist me, uh, I think that would be the best bet. If the witches would permit me another try. Just open it. They're getting impatient. Okay, I'm going to do another one with advantage then. I can assure you I've done the first one. I can do this one if you just uh, give me some chances here. Oh, and that twin. Woo! Boom, and the door comes open. Um... Oh, hey, uh, we just lost connection with OBS, so let's give oh. it a chance to reconnect. Uh, let's see. Looks I like you guys are watching again. That's nice. <laughs> I did not expect another 20. I thought I was going to have to like do that for a while. <laughs> uh, Hugo says, for a moment, I thought Logan was back. <laughs> that was probably that fuck you comment. Um, and he says, I'm so done with pie now. <laughs> uh, and Hugo also says, go, kill them. Kill all the witches. Alright. Did we reestablish... Nope. I guess I gotta go check Twitch. Hold on. Oh, reconnection successful. There we go. All right, welcome back. Uh, sorry, just had some random disconnection. That's just the way technology rolls for us here. But, uh, yes, uh, the door has been forced open. And beyond it, I will kind of review it. Let's see. Mask mode. Oh, another sarcophagus. Three of them. Alright, uh, you've given the witches what they want. And they said... Ah, very well. We knew it was a good idea to ask for your assistance. That is all we require. Please... 
exit the temple, and we will send your friend after you. Once we're sure you're gone. Uh, Elias nods in agreement. He knows that they're in no condition to really question what they're doing. Unless the others have object. Mm, not currently. Well, Jeeves is in the best shape of any of us. <laughs> We're taking four damage. Everyone roll a sense motive check. I think I know what they want to do. <laughs> Insight? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alex, have... you're pretty sure... Oh, uh, I you're pretty sure once you guys get out of range, Oop. Jack, probably not making it out of this. Oh, he's not coming with us? No, they're keeping Jack and letting you guys go. Well, that wasn't part of the bargain. No. Well, they just want to make sure that, uh, that they're safe. Oh, well, uh, Elias says, uh, yes, I agree with your, um, with the settlement here, but you first must give us our friend back. We will not attack you. That's ridiculous. Look at us. We're you in think no we would give up to be leverage? fighting. Yes, we can tell. And this is why we think that this is our best chance of success. If you leave, we will get what we want. Return your friend to you. I have given you what you want, and I have done it quite well, I might add. Why would we attack you and risk further damaging and possibly killing ourselves? We have why no reason to fight you. Why would you argue with we who have the advantage here we have the leverage we're being quite generous we could just kill this man if that's what you want and we could kill you if that's what you want but I don't think that's what you want uh, roll a persuasion check alas yeah I was going to do that um... wow <laughs> uh oh Hold on. Well, me and Alex are both doing it, so she could do it too, or advantage or something. Uh, she can do it her own, if she wants to. Alright. Let's see here. Oh, nope, they'll have none of that. Uh, natural 20 <laughs> against the, uh, persuasion. But that doesn't mean that they refuse. That just means, you know, they could choose to refuse or not. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they do choose to refuse. They say, there's no reason that you three shouldn't just leave right now. Trust is not required. You either leave or we kill him now. Our reason is in your hands currently. You'll kill him if we leave. We'll not waste our time arguing with you. What is your choice? You give me Jack, or we fight. God, really? And with that, uh... Ooh... That's not going to be good. Uh, you see their three broomsticks animate. And uh, one of them is going to charge at Elias. We don't begin a new turn? Like a new initiative? Uh, this is going to be the surprise round. It's not like you don't get to defend. It's just, uh... Oh, do you want to just roll initiative and attack him? Well, I think this counts as a separate encounter to for everything, doesn't it? Sure. Everybody roll initiative. Oh, lord. Well, they're attacking us. Eh, one broom is flying your way. <laughs> I see. I mean, if they were attacking you, they'd attack Jack first, right? 
I suppose. Um, so you're saying a broom is flying at me? Uh, yeah. That, that's the way. That's the first action that was taken. So I'm going to consider that a surprise round. But okay. We have um, nice initiatives here. All right. Well, Elias is just going to to watch it. He's not going to take an, an aggressive position yet. He's kind of just standing with his arms at his sides. All right. Uh, let me see here what this broom can do. <laughs> wow. I can actually make two attacks. <laughs> Uh, first is a hit. Uh, the broom <laughs> smacks you for seven points of damage. And once again, it, uh, it smacks, or it tries to. Let's see if it hits. Uh, it <laughs> rolled automatic miss. <laughs> wow, man, my ones and twenty or ones and twenties are all over the place. Um, all right, but yeah. Uh, they have shown you violently that they mean business but nothing else happens from them at the moment so uh, Alex you'll be able to go first here what do you want to do I don't want to die none of us want to die but we're all going to if we don't do something else yes like leave you had to pick a fight with them do you only care about your own life I care about all of us surviving long enough to do what we came here to do. How would we do that with Jack being dead, with me being how dead? How would we do that with us being dead right here and now, Elias? This is how we survive. Separated, we die. Together, we can fight. You will not survive much longer, and neither will Jack. I'm hurting as well, and I have no moves left for anything. I'm exhausted. I need to rest. All of us do. So, it would be the same to you if you left this right now. If we stay and try to fight all three of these witches and their brooms, we will die. You hear a dark, ominous laughter come from behind the witches, and they suddenly look very surprised. And this voice comes from behind them that says, You foolish, foolish witches. You are now flanked gave us enough time to come around from the other side of the temple. You will release my friend immediately, or you will be vaporized immediately. And let me roll an intimidation check from Esmeralda. This is not something that she's normally doing, but she does have performance, so I'm going to count that. <laughs> she didn't make a very great roll. Let's see how these witches uh, can contend with this. They're not too smart, however. Um, and the witches do seem a bit unnerved here. So, uh, they're just going to kind of start looking around behind them and say, just let us access that room and we'll be on our way. What do you guys want to do now? I'll get out of the way so they can do that. <laughs> okay. Are they giving up Jack though is the question. Uh, yeah, it looks like they're kind of coming to an understanding here that they just want what they want, then they'll they'll be the ones to leave. 
Okay, that's what I was hoping would happen anyway. Yeah, it looks like Esmeralda has bluffed them into thinking that reinforcements have arrived. Which, kind of, in a way, they have. All right, so, uh, yep, they will begin moving to the room. Does anybody want to attack them or anything? Like, let me know, because they're moving now. No, no attacks for me. Nope. <clears throat> nope. All right, well, you see them all three enter the room on the other side. Uh, Elias, you saw in that room, um, it had a blue marble floor, but other than that, it looked very similar to the one that had the hole in the ceiling. Yeah. But yeah, you could see those shifting shapes in the in the amber in the dark room ahead. Elias is figuring because he kind of put two and two together from what Jack did in the the previous room like that. He thinks the witches want to get the gifts from the sarcophaguses, and he's he's fine with that. Whatever. Um, so they're gonna he's gonna try to go back up the hole next movement he gets. Uh, actually, no, 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 I'm going to bring uh, Emil back. Next movement I get. Okay. Um, you see the three broomsticks kind of fly to the door and keep guard. They kind of sweep Jeeves kind of out of the way, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeeves, I moved you a little. That's so good. Uh, yeah, all right. So, um, Elias, you can go and heal a mill now. All right, good. That will be a lay on hands. All right. How many points do you want to give him? Just one or what? I can drag it to him. That'll be five. Oh, okay. There he goes. I think it has to be in fives. Really? Yeah, from my understanding of it, I get uh, as many uh, charges of, as my paladin level, and mm -hmm. I get two, and they're both fives from how I read it. Hmm. Okay. That sounds less broken, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well. Alright, uh, Emil, uh, is this bringing him back from the dead, or... No, no Jack, conscious. Okay. Jack brought him back from the dead, per se, but didn't heal him. Yeah, that was basically within one round. Uh, Emil opens his eyes, and uh, he looks very confused. He says, Ah, I see the golem came down with me. So glad I can help. <laughs> no, you did well, my friend. Uh, Jack took care... Excuse me. Um, it was Jack, right? The Elder's Blast did it. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Jack took care of the golem. It is no more. But we, we must get out of here. We have a situation otherwise. Ah, definitely not feeling well. None of us are, friend. But we are all alive. All right. Alex, what do you want to do? She wants to rest. <laughs> yeah, we all do. We have to get out of here first. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jeeves? Mm. You want to rest right here in front of the witches? Not really, but... I don't... I don't really need to rest, so... <laughs> yeah, he's the only one that's, like, green as can be over there. Big green dot. Everybody else is yellow or orange. Well, well Jeeves expends um, cunning action points or something, right? No. Uh, Esmeralda's magic begins to wear off, so... Yeah, I don't have any kind of recovery points. Huh. I just is. Uh, Esmeralda made sure she was on this side before she became visible, though. She doesn't want the witches to see her. <laughs> she sounded pretty intimidating. She too. tried. <laughs> I don't think yeah, she sounded too great, but, you know. I mean, like, you know, how you did it. I thought Straw had <laughs> showed up or something. Oh, really? Excellent. Yeah. Uh, well, he might be on his way soon if the vampires uh, let him know where you guys are. 
I figured he already knew where we were, so it didn't really matter that much. Well. <laughs> All right. I mean, uh, Jack has no problem rejoining everybody, and I think you are all going up the hole. Is that correct? Yeah, the safest place we know is where we've already been. All right. So on the other floor of the temple, do you guys still have that shared? Yeah. I'll update it just in case. But yeah, I probably screwed our tokens <laughs> up. Um, Van Richten is very happy to see everyone. That everyone is healthy and alive. Well, not healthy. Not healthy. Alive. <laughs> that everyone's alive. It could have very easily been different. Right. You're just going to leave Jeeves down there with the broomsticks? <laughs> no. I don't have Jeeves on the combat tracker, do I? Where is he? Yeah, He's right there uh, on the in map. the middle. Right next to Esmeralda. Oh, I see. I see. There's so much stuff on the combat tracker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's a combat tracker preview for all of those watching Twitch. <laughs> uh, I can't drag it. Anyways. Okay, so where in the temple would you guys like to go? I have two ideas. We'll see what everybody else, if they have an idea. Go I ahead. I think the altar room is the safest. This room's pretty safe. <laughs> so what, what you guys just said were the two things I was going to suggest. <laughs> uh... So either the one Jeeves just pointed out, or the sanctuary, because they both only have one entrance. I guess the sanctuary has chairs and stuff we can sit on. And hopefully no vampires. Yeah. Hmm, okay. So you guys want to try to rest in there? Uh, what the door here is like a normal door with handles and hinges and whatnot, isn't it? No, it's just like the rest of the doors that you guys have found. Um, the ones down below seem that are kind of where the sarcophaguses are are a bit more sturdy looking, but uh, mm -hmm. those those were locked. These were not. Is there something we can move to barricade the door? Uh, the, Maybe one of the one of the pews, perhaps. Let me see what they're made of. Hmm. Those are red marble benches, so no, I don't think you can move those. Uh, how about the the altar and the the other thing over there near the other the opposite wall? Uh, the altar is made of black obsidian. All obsidian's black. I don't know why I said black obsidian, but uh, <laughs> there's a, an obsidian lectern and a slab. Oh, a slab of black slate. Yeah, so slate and obsidian and marble. Nothing really movable. Um, that. That lectern, if you dislodge it from its location, it might be good to put in front of a door, but if you can move it, whatever's trying to get in might be able to as well. Uh, well, if the door is closed behind it, I wouldn't think so, because they'd have to open the door to move it first. Eh, yeah, you, th you think it could possibly be a good brace in that case. And the slate you're saying is like not not a slab sitting on top of something. It's just part of the the building to the floor or something. Like that altar there. It looks like you might be able to move it too, but it's it's pretty heavy. Hmm. Okay. Well, Elias will uh, do what he can with strength checks to move something to the door. 
block it. Sure. Uh, you can see that the uh, the black slate slab once served as some kind of chalkboard and has a few chalk marks on it. Um, yeah. But yeah, then you uh, dislodge the, uh, the obsidian lectern. Uh, roll a strength check to do so. Okay, does anyone like to hit assist me in doing this? Emil will volunteer. Excellent. All right. Manage. Hey, does he have more strength than me? <laughs> if it was anyone but you, I would, <laughs> I would question it. But he might. Uh, his strength. Maybe your strength. Uh, you're stronger than he is. Okay. All right. So. 18. Yeah, uh, it's slow work, but you guys eventually pry it up out of its current spot and drag it all the way up and put it in front of the closed door. Excellent. It looks like you have a nice room here to take a rest in for a while. And that would be a good place for us to wrap up. Uh, we'll do a long rest is what everyone's wanting, correct? Yep. Yeah. I'll keep going to the door. Uh, let me see. All right, I have applied a long rest. Um, oh, healthy <laughs> ball. It's about time. Huh? All right, well, with that, we will pick up next week and um, find out what happens next in the Castlevania Ravenloft RPG. Thanks, everybody. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Yep. Thanks, Hugo. Go. Thanks, Hugo, yeah. for watching the stream. Always always good to have you out there.